Hello, Young Math Padawans. It's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on function notation. So we've learned a lot about functions, their inputs, and their outputs, but now we're going to learn about a new way that we can represent functions using the specific notation that you end up using a lot in algebra. So if you were able to print this out or have it in front of you, this would be a great thing to just set up in your notes. Otherwise, you can just follow along on a piece of paper. So let's get started. At this point in algebra, everything that we've looked at has been in what's called standard notation. So I'm going to give you a function here, y equals 3x plus 1. Now, this is a standard notation function because you can clearly see that our inputs here are going to be our x values, and our outputs here are our y values. So again, our inputs are x. Our function is to multiply that input x by 3, then add 1, and then our output is going to be y. So let's look at an example. If we were to input 5, then that would be y equals 3 times 5 plus 1. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 1 gives us an output of 16. So what's the statement here? Well, the statement is that when x equals 5, y equals 16. So this is the notation that you are, should be used to at this point. Now let's take a look at function notation. It can be used for the exact same purpose, taking your inputs, plugging it, them in, and generating your outputs. It just looks a little funky. Here's our function notation statement. Now I'm going to read this out loud, and I want you to read it out loud with me. We read this as f of x. Say that three times. f of x, f of x, f of x. Not f times x, not f parentheses x. As I read this, read along with me. f of x equals 3x plus 1. What this basically means is that this is called function f. There could also be other functions named function g, function h, function i. We'll look at those in the next video. Now let's learn about how we can actually read this function notation f of x equals 3x plus 1. Our inputs here are still x. The function here is still f of x equals 3x plus 1, but this time, instead of our outputs being y, our outputs are f of x. Let me show you an example. Let's say we wanted to input the value of 5 again. This is where it looks a little bit different, and I'm going to write this out. We would say that f, our function name of five, because now we're essentially inputting five, is equal to our function three times five plus one. So let's just quickly compare and contrast these. We have the same function, three, three times five plus one and three times five plus one, but now we're showing that our output f of x for specific input five Whereas in standard notation, you're just showing y. So this means our function f when x is 5. Now our output is going to stay the same. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. So our output for this function is still 16. Now here's what's interesting, and this is what we're going to practice in this video. The function statement in standard form has to be kind of like a sentence. The function statement in function form is a little bit different. Let me show you what it is first f of 5 equals 16. And really what we're saying here is that function f when x is 5 has an output of 16. I'm going to write that down for you. So again, this is saying function f when x is 5, has a value of 16. The cool thing about function notation is that when you actually write out your final statement, it shows you the function that you use, the input that you use, and its output. So let's go ahead and look at our example. So hopefully you were able to either print out these notes ahead of time or maybe set them up in your notebook ahead of time. But if you do need some time to set this up, we pretty much have a table where we have our inputs, our function, the function statement in an ordered pair, and then we're going to graph them, and then we're going to describe the graph. 
So take a moment, pause the video if you need to set this up. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this. So the directions are to evaluate the function. Evaluate just means find the values. And again, we would read this as f of x equals 3x plus 1 for the given domain. Now remember, domain is your set of inputs. So if we look at this table, we are given a specific set of inputs that we're supposed to use for this function, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I'm going to walk you through the first few, and then you'll be able to do some on your own. So starting with our input of negative 2. So using function notation, we're first going to set up our f of statement. So f of blank equals, and then our function. Then we're going to put in our input x. So we're evaluating function f when x is negative 2. And then we're going to input negative 2 into the actual function. So this is how we would read it. f of negative 2 equals 3 times negative 2 plus 1. We basically just replace both x's in function notation with our input negative 2. Now let's simplify. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 gives us an output of negative 5. All right, now let's think about our function statement. So what was our input, what was our function, and what was our output? So our function's name was f. We inputted negative 2, and then our output was negative 5. So we would read this as f of negative 2 equals negative 5. Finally, if we're going to eventually graph this, we need to put this into an ordered pair. Now remember, ordered pairs are always x, comma, y. So your input first, then your output. So let's open up a parentheses and first start with what was our input. Our input here was negative 2 and our output, negative 5. So for this function, when x is negative 2, our output's negative 5. Let's try another input, looking at negative 1. So starting with our function notation, f of input negative 1. So again, we read that f of negative 1 equals, and then I can substitute negative 1 into my function, 3 times negative 1 plus 1. Let's simplify. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So we've just found another input-output pair. All right, time for our function statement. So our function here was f. We substituted in negative 1, and our output was negative 2. So reading this out loud, we would read this as f of negative 1 equals negative 2. Finally, our ordered pair. Open up your parentheses and put a comma between. Our input for this particular situation was negative 1, and our output was negative 2. All right, I think that you are ready to try 0, 1, and 2 on your own. So let's pause the video here so that you can try those three. Okay, I'm going to speed through these and see how you did. and pasted them just so that I could plot them in the coordinate plane correctly. So you didn't have to do that. Okay, negative 2, negative 5. So that's going to be where x is negative 2 and y is negative 5. That's going to be the point right here. That's our first point. 
Negative one, negative two is where X is negative one, Y is negative two. That's gonna be that point right there. Zero, one is where X is zero, Y is one. So that's gonna be this point here. One, four is gonna be this point here. And then two, seven is gonna be this point here. Let me get now, the final thing that we're going to do is connect this to what we learned earlier in the week. How can we describe this using our math vocabulary? So first of all, would we say that this graph is increasing, decreasing, or constant? Well, as I move from left to right, my little red dot there is going up. So that means that this graph is increasing. Now, would we call this a discrete domain or a continuous domain? Well, remember, discrete means countable. Can you count the number of points here? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, you can, which means this graph has a discrete domain. Now, if I wanted to add a little more detail, I could also say what the domain and range was in this graph. If we go back up to our table, our domain was just our set of input and our range was our set of output. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my description. Remember, when we describe domain and range, we use set notation, ordered from least to greatest with no repeats. So now you get to practice. You're gonna go through some Desmos screens that allow you to practice interpreting and using function notation. So when in doubt, you can come back to this screen and just compare our standard notation to the function. And remember, it's called f of x. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you next time.